The U.S. military is calling this an unprovoked attack that lasted for over three hours last night, which began around midnight when 500 fighters affiliated with Russia and Syria's Assad regime began an attack on a U.S. outpost in eastern Syria, five miles over the Euphrates River, the demarcation line separating U.S.-backed fighters and Russian-backed fighters of the Assad regime. The Russian-backed fighters attacked with tanks, artillery, and mortars. When the rounds landed too close for comfort, U.S. Special Operations Forces on the ground called in the massive counterattack from the sky. The U.S. airstrikes included AC-130 gunships, F-15s, F-22s, Apache helicopter gunships, and Marine artillery on the ground. All available U.S. jets in the area responded and killed 100 enemy fighters, I am told. No U.S. troops were hurt. One allied Syrian fighter was hurt. U.S. officials say that they had seen the buildup of these Russian-backed forces near the base for a week. The American military called their Russian counterparts on a special hotline and were told not to worry by their Russian counterparts. Now, this isn't the first brush with the Syrian regime for the U.S. military. Last year, the U.S. Navy fired 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles at a Syrian air base after the Pentagon accused the Assad regime of carrying out a chemical weapons attack. A U.S. Navy jet shot down a Syrian warplane. It was the first time in 18 years the U.S. Navy or military had shot down another plane in air-to-air -air combat. Sandra, I'm told the, the Russian-backed forces wanted to take back former ISIS oil fields in the area now guarded by U.S.-backed Syrian fighters. Another example of the tangled web facing the nearly 2,000 U.S. troops on the ground in Syria, Sandra.